Hey y'all, in this video, we're gonna talk about iOS interview questions and how you mess them up sometimes. If you're new to my channel, my name is Eugene, I'm an iOS developer, and I interviewed a number of iOS peeps, and I decided to make a video on uh, the questions that, that people were struggling with. So I noticed certain patterns, certain questions for some reason people just wouldn't handle them well. So, and today we're gonna work over them. The first question that people usually get get wrong is tell me about yourself. Usually people would go on a tangent and would tell me about themselves for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And it's not really what tell me about your and tell me about yourself question is about tell me about yourself as a short summary of your professional experience for example i'm an ios developer i'm native i'm a native ios developer i work with the native apple framework such as ui kit swift ui i have exposure to iv foundation i work with regex in swift for uh bark code scanning I develop mobile apps for enterprise companies, public facing, business facing um, applications uh, that are available in App Store as well as internal apps that are available only within the org. I also have experience developing SDKs. Personally, I do enjoy working with the uh, customer facing features because there are more people are able to see my work. There are more people are able to use my app and it's always, always exciting for me. And that's it. Sometimes people will ask you about your recent experience. So it's a similar answer. You go on your current job. If you're, if you are employed, you talk about your current job, what you're currently doing at your work, uh, what technology frameworks, stuff like that you're working with. Then you might go to your previous employer and really briefly mention what you were working on. Like definitely don't go into details. Just say, hey, it was enterprise app or say, oh, it was an SDK or say it was whatever. It was React Native app or whatever the case might be. And then one before that, you can just mention it like as one sentence and at the previous job, I was doing exactly the same thing. I was also working on customer facing application, enterprise application, and that would be enough. The next question that people normally underperform is view life cycle events. So, and majority of the people, majority, majority of y'all get it right. You name all the life cycle events, which are view will appear view did load, view will disappear, view did disappear, view will lay out some views, view did lay out some views, load view. So you name all of them correctly, majority of the time. And I don't really count if you name all of them, at least you name majority of them. But what is missing? People are not providing examples. So after you name them, provide me at least one example. For example, you may say that I would like to illustrate you one example between view will appear and view did load. I would provide the code that would configure the state of my view controller or view will appear because I would like to have my view controller in a certain state every time, every time it appears, not just when it initially initialized and configured. So it's really important for my, for my application. That's why I put my code that is related to certain state of my view controller in view will appear. So, and it's a great example. You can use any other example with any other view controller, view controller life cycle events. So it's fine as long as you provide an example. The next question that kind of surprises me when people stumble or underperform or don't provide examples is auto layout. I usually ask people, tell me about auto layout and tell me about your techniques. What kind of techniques do you use in auto layout? 
Auto layout is a very complex topic, and I can talk about auto layout for a long time. I can probably make the whole channel just only about auto layout. So, and this is definitely this is definitely a good resource to provide examples. What usually people what usually people say is, "Oh, I do my auto layout in Storyboard, and that's it." Or, oh, I do my auto layout in code. But it doesn't matter whether you do it in storyboard or in code. You must have or you, you should use certain techniques that are particularly useful. For example, stack views. You can use stack views to organize your views. And it's easier to manage stack views than many separate views independently. And if you look at Swift UI, VStack, HStack, ZStack, it's a foundation of Swift UI view. So you can do the similar thing in UIKit, and your view is going to be way more manageable, and the constraints are going to be way more manageable. Of course, it will depend, but um, well, it will depend on your particular application. But you can specify or you can name that example as an example how to manage auto layout. And you can also say that you can provide constraints or you can provide anchors. You can constrain views to one another. You can constrain or ping views or uh, provide anchors to like each, um, uh, each anchor of the view. And you can ping views like that. You can specify frame. You can do all all kinds of stuff and this is your out loud and this is your out loud and like I said it's really complex topic and you can provide many many examples how you work with your UI and it's really important to provide those kind of examples so your interviewer knows that you know how to handle out loud and um, the next question that people are struggling with is testing. And testing is a big one. Testing is a big one. Previous questions like, eh, nah, you know, just people don't provide examples or they're really short. With testing, people really mess up, like really bad. When it comes to testing, you have to realize that, or you have to know two types of testing, UI testing and unit testing. Unit testing is focus on the logic on one unit you test one thing per test in ui test you it's sort of integration test so you test your view or view controller and you can uh, create integration tests and how all of your views all of your functionality works together and create end-to-end -end tests. So this is the major difference between UI tests and unit tests. Another difference is framework. If you're using native Apple framework, XCT test is the main framework for unit tests and XUI test is a framework for UI tests. And XUI test runs XCT tests under the hood, but the technology that is used for UI tests is XUI test. Your unit test will have access to the code base and, or to the code of your app, to the logic of your app. Whereas UI tests won't have any access to your code, any access to your logic. Instead, you will have to provide XUI query for XUI element to perform certain operations or perform, perform certain actions. So your UI test will be absolutely clueless about the code. It's black box testing. It's the same thing as user would normally do. User is not aware of your code. And so is UI test. So it's a major difference. And with the unit test, you normally put a testable import. With UI test, you don't have to do that. And with UI tests, you don't have to use XUI tests. You can use keep it, keep it functional, KEEF, which is, I think it is useful because it is easier to provide stops and uh, fake your network requests and provide your fake JSON. With XUI tests, it's a little bit more complicated. I think uh, when it comes to mocking, it's 
really challenging part of the job when it comes to UI tests. Mocking is really, really difficult with XUI tests, but with Keef, I feel like it's a little bit easier. It's a little bit manage it's a little bit more manageable because you can do the same thing as you do with unit tests. So if you're preparing for the interview, make sure that you study your UI test, make sure that you know the difference between unit test and UI test. And one thing that people say that, oh, UI test, I don't work with UI test. I have QA, QA does UI test. And it's true for some of the companies, but you don't know if that, if your team that you're interviewing for, if they have a QA in, or if QA is responsible for writing tests. At some companies, you are responsible for writing UI tests and QA just maintains them. Or as that QA department, test automation department just maintains them. It can be really different from company to company. So it's definitely good to know that framework and it's definitely good to be prepared to answer that. And the last but not least is when you don't ask any questions. So normally at the end of the interview, your interviewer will ask you, do you have any questions for me? And so many people will just say, oh, no, I'm good. Oh, I don't have any questions. And it's really not a good look on you. It looks like that you're not interested. It's a red flag and um, it can disqualify you from moving forward. It can disqualify you from moving forward. Definitely have your questions prepared. Definitely study on the company culture, the what company does. Ask about ask questions that you are interested in. It doesn't have to be like uh, standard questions. And the more deep questions you ask, for example, like I don't know, like what what you really care about, the more uh, your interviewer will understand that. Uh, you know, interested in the company, but definitely keep it about the company and keep it about the role. Don't just ask any random questions. I remember one one person asked me, um, how did you like WWDC? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was a nice question, but it had nothing to do with the job, honestly. So I answered that, uh, but it had nothing to do with the job. So make sure that you ask your questions. And another aspect, another aspect, sometimes what happens on the interview, and the interviewee understands that interview didn't go so well. And they get upset. They get really upset. And at the end, when I ask them, do you have any questions for me? They just say no and just hang up. It's not really good look on you. And in this situation, if you realize that you didn't perform well or if it's not a good fit it's not a good match for you what you can do you can ask for the feedback and say hey i do realize that i didn't perform too well if you could if it is acceptable can you can you give me a feedback what i could do better just from your perspective because i really want to improve my performance and i want to do better next time when i'm interviewing for an ios role so it's really good look on you or if you realize that it's not a good it's not a good fit you can also say that out loud and say hey i like the company your team sounds really fun, but I don't think it is for me. I don't think it is for me. I look something different. I look for X, Y, and Z, and it doesn't look like your team can provide can provide it for me, which is fine. And it's something that I keep on my feedback. Uh, and usually, after I if the interview did go so well, and if that candidate establish that re a rapport and was professional, I normally provide my feedback that it is a no for now and it's not no forever. I totally recommend to keep reaching out to that candidate and talk to that candidate in the future if we have any other roles. It's just not the right fit for this team and for this position. Definitely keep that candidate in mind. And some of my candidates, like they got the second phone call and the second interview and they got the role. So it also happens. So yeah, 
I hope it was useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what questions you are struggling with when it comes to iOS develop development questions or iOS interview questions. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye y'all.